In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option traders can make. I'm going to do that by sharing with you how much cash flow we made last month in March. I will also show you two trades that we did last month that I think will help you to see two things. First, how to pick trades that have a very high probability of winning. And second, how to successfully deal with a position that's going against you. Here you see every option trade we did last month in March. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. And I encourage you to stay tuned in until the very end of this video because that's where I'll show you exactly how much cash flow we put into our pocket by selling options as well as the return that we received on our capital and the return on the margin requirement. The first trade I want to tell you about is in the company UGI. UGI is a gas utility company that has a very stable, solid history of profit as well as paying out dividends. In fact, it's been paying dividends for 34 years without a reduction. Over the last 20 years, it's grown its dividends by an average of 7% each year. UGI became America's first publicly traded utility holding company when it was founded back in 1882 in Eastern Pennsylvania. This is exactly the kind of company that I like to trade in. Because of that, when given the opportunity, I like to trade options in it. In fact, as you can see here, we've been trading options continuously in UGI since November of last year. Since we started trading in UGI back on November 22nd, it was behaving like the perfect option trading stock. It was trading sideways or slightly up. However, on February 3rd, UGI decided to go cliff diving and ended up dropping from $47 per share down to $33 per share in less than two months. That was right at a 30% drop in a stable, solid utility company. Expected? Honestly, no. But that's why we get paid as option traders. You see, when we sell options, we're selling insurance to other traders and investors. However, as a veteran option trader, this didn't bother me at all. It just simply meant that we needed to start working on repairing this position. As you can see here on February 17th, we were assigned two of the put option contracts that we had sold. At that point, it was decision time. Because the decline was so fast and it was done on such strong volume, with UGI beginning to level off around this $38 strike price, I decided to sell the covered call options that were $5 below where we had been assigned the stock at. So I sold the third Friday of March $40 covered call option. For that, we received 40 cents per share. My thinking is that it was highly unlikely that UGI would get back to its recent high anytime soon. In fact, looking back to November, it found support right at $41 per share. I believe that if UGI did begin to go back up, it will most likely at least temporarily find resistance at that previous low. Because previous lows, they tend to turn into the resistance once a stock breaks out below them. At this point, it looked like a position that we'd be able to easily manage successfully because UGI was starting to trade sideways. There were even several decent volume up days, as you can see in the white rectangle. However, little did I know, UGI wasn't finished with this downward move. On March 1st, it began another leg down and ended up dropping from a recent high of $39 per share down to $33 per share. Now, when something like this happens to you, it's important to pay attention to your emotions. I had a message this morning from someone in my Patreon group about a position that had moved against them. Their exact words were, I need to have a grip on my emotions, seeing the price of the put go way high and wanting to do a fix. And they made a great point. To be a successful long-term stock and option trader, you have to be able to control your emotions. You must make decisions based on logic and not based on your emotions. That's one reason why I don't advocate using a lot of leverage. When you have a ton of leverage, it's very difficult to base decisions on logic because you're worried about what's going to happen to your overall account. So when UGI went against us, it didn't phase me at all. I mean zero, zilch, nada, nothing. I just simply began to research a position to make sure that nothing new had come out about the company which made me want to exit this position. And I found that UGI, it was still in great shape. It was still selling gas. Nothing had really changed fundamentally that made me want to get out of this position and no longer be in a bullish position in this company. That meant that it was time to get to work fixing this position. So on March 8th, realizing that it was very unlikely that UGI would rebound anytime soon, we bought to close the third Friday of March $40 covered call option for $0.08 cents per share and simultaneously sold the third Friday of April $35 covered call option. For that option, we were paid $1.03 per share. So we put a net of 95 cents per share into our pocket. That was a nice start in repairing this position. We we're also lined up to receive the dividend because as you can see here, UGI was going ex-dividend on April 1st. That would put another 34 cents per share into our pocket. Not bad for a position that had gone dramatically against us in such a big way. Since March's expiration was only a week away, it was decision time on the $45 April put options that we had sold. 
I knew that if we didn't do something with those puts, they would eventually be assigned to us. I decided that I wanted to let that happen. By taking assignment, I could collect that dividend while also having more flexibility to move the cover call option strike price around that would put us in a more advantageous position. On March 15th, 400 more shares of UGI were assigned to us at $45 per share. I immediately sold the third Friday of April $35 covered call option, and for that, I received $1.55 per share. Now, I want to point out that on that day, UGI traded over that $35 strike price. However, it had been in such a sharp decline that I felt comfortable selling an in-the-money covered call option. We pocketed a nice premium and then lined up to receive the dividend. Now, fast forward to today, and it's April 7th, and UGI closed yesterday at $36.48 per share. Our covered call option is $1.48 per share in the money. So what do we do? Well, a couple things come to mind when I look at this chart. I see that UGI has recently made a higher high on the daily chart, as well as it appears to be trying to make a higher low. But I also see that it's approaching the green 50 moving average, which is currently just below $38 per share. Typically, that moving average should serve as resistance for it, at least temporarily. In addition to the moving average, we also see that in the previous wave, back in February, UGI made a high right at $38.84 per share. If it breaks through that green 50 moving average, this previous area of resistance will most likely serve as resistance for it again. I mean, anything can happen here, but we're playing the odds. I want to do my best to not allow UGI to get too far in the money on our covered call option. You see, I want to be able to roll that covered call option up and out if UGI continues showing strength. But we do have an ace in the hole here, and here's my ace. Here you see my entire current UGI position. We were assigned 600 shares at $45 per share. Interactive Brokers is telling me that my cost basis is just over $40 per share. And as you can see here in my personal spreadsheet, where I keep track of all my trades, it corresponds pretty closely with what Interactive Brokers is saying. But here's what my ace in the hole looks like. If we do the math, 600 shares times $45 per share, we currently own $27,000 worth of UGI stock. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I have a rule to have at most 5% at risk in any one position. 5% of our approximately $1 million account would be $50,000. That means that we have an additional $23,000 that we can put into this UGI position and still remain at our maximum position size. If UGI advances really fast and the cover call options go deep in the money, I will then use the cash from selling cash secured put options to help pay to roll this cover call strike price up and out in time. That's one reason why I love trading options so much. When a position goes against you, there are a lot of techniques and strategies that you can use to fix your positions. Notice though that it all starts with the fact that we are trading in solid, mature, consistently profitable companies. So that was a trade that went against us in a big way and how we're fixing it. Now let me show you one that went our way really fast. Let me tell you why that happened so you can use that knowledge to do similar trades that have the potential to yield extremely high returns that will allow you to get in and out of them very quickly. Digital Realty Trust, ticker symbol DLR, is one of the largest publicly traded real estate investment companies in the U.S. It supports the data center needs of over 2,300 customers across many different industries. It's basically a data center read. In fact, it has 198 data centers in 12 countries. It is a consistently profitable real estate company. Therefore, it's on my list of companies that I feel comfortable trading in. As you can see here on March 12th, in my weekly top five list that I send out to my patrons, I rank DLR as a 7.5 out of 10 as a potential trade candidate. That meant that it was very high up on my list to look for an opportunity for a technical setup that I really felt comfortable trading DLR at. Three days later, on March 15th, I realized that DLR was finding really nice support around 132 per share on the daily chart. What made it an even more compelling trade is as you can see on the right chart, the weekly chart, at the blue line, on March 15th, and over the previous several weeks, DLR had also been finding nice support right at the red 200 moving average. The downward slowly pressure that had been rising in February had now switched over to buying pressure. Because of that, as you can see here in the alert I sent out to my patrons when I made this trade, once we closed out the cash secured put options in Merck that we had sold and made a really nice profit on, we used that capital to sell a new cash secured put option in DLR. We sold the April 14th 125 cash secure put option. For that, we received $2 per share. Now fast forward just seven days, one week later, and as a result of DLR going up in price, as well as the volatility declining in the put option that we sold, we were able to buy it back for just 40 cents per share. So the net that we put into our pocket was $1.60 per share in just one week. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 66.7% non-leverage annualized return. What's important to note here is that DLR had been finding really nice support in multiple timeframes. 
That coupled with the increased buying pressure we can see happening as a result of the volume, it made this a very high probability trade. As a note, several days later on March 25th, with DLR appearing to make a new higher low, and there's still being nice buying volume, we decided to enter a new position at a higher strike price. Here you see that we sold the third Friday of April 135 cash secure put option for $1.65 per share. It just so happens that right as I was preparing for this video, the limit order I had set at $0.10 cents per share to close out the DLR short put option, it was filled. So as you can see here, we have now closed out the third Friday of April 135 cash secure put option in DLR for just $0.10 cents per share. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just shared with you, I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And while you're there, go ahead and hit the subscribe and bell notification. Now let me show you exactly how much net cash we pocketed last month by selling put, covered call, and poor man's covered call options. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see that as a result of selling options, we put $12,649 cash into our pocket. Please know that this amount includes the cost of buying some long-term protected put options in TQQQ. That's an experimental, highly volatile 3x levered ETF position that we're trading in. We're trying to figure out a way to trade in this highly leveraged ETF while giving ourselves some downside protection. Those put options cost us right at $1,804. If you add back in the cost of buying those leaps put options, then we would have put into our pocket $14,453. In the orange box, you see that trading commission cost us $87.46. On the right in the purple box, you see that market data cost us $32.75. At the bottom left in the green box, so we collected just over $1,235 in dividends from the seven covered call positions that we were in. In all, as a result of buying and selling options, as well as collecting some dividends, we put a net of $15,568 into our pocket. If you annualize that return on the just over $1 million in capital that we had at risk, it equates to right at a 17.5% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on the $123,894 margin requirement was, if you don't add in the margin for the short calls we've been selling in the S&P 500, it equates to a 147.9% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trade, similar to the ones I showed in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you really want to take your ops trading to the next level, it's vital that you know how to handle positions that go against you and are assigned to you. In the video at the link above, I share some of my best covered call option trading tips that will take what I've just shared with you and increase your knowledge and help you deal with those positions when they go against you. So please check out that video. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.